Hey, everybody. Welcome to another edition of Bird Brain 66. On my left or my right is uh, Mr. Brian Brech, the uh, co-host of this fabulous show. Say hello, Brian. Hello, Brian. Hey, everybody. Welcome. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for kicking us off, Andy. My name is Andy Teague, and uh, let's get this thing started. We're doing the uh, 2023 Big Tops Big League set. It's a really nice set. Uh, this, this, they, this thing first came out in 2018. They skipped a year, which was 2022, and brought it back this year. Did a really nice job with this set. 18 base cards in the set. And uh, let me uh, just start off with, uh, let me see who I start off. I'm going to start off with this guy because I'm not sure he, I'm not sure he's even with the Cardinals anymore, but I'm going to go ahead and put uh, Tyler O'Neill up there. Uh, he was the outfielder that started the year with the Cardinals, but uh, I'm not sure. I'm not sure where he's at. Haven't heard much about him, but uh, this is what the card looks like. Got the BL on top of there in the uh, corner and pretty much your standard fare as far as the uh, stats and uh, some bylines in the back there of, uh, of the player on here so here's the uh, first look at the uh, tops of big league been out for a little bit what do you think about this set brian and uh and the previous sets that they've had in the uh edition i like them but i just wanted to go back to to poor tyler for just a, a okay minute. you know mr mr bodybuilder i'm not going to knock him for bodybuilding or anything like that i know you're big time into weights but it just doesn't seem like that whole scenario of him lifting weights and trying to be a ball player have uh, paired well for him uh just seems like uh a lot of the injuries he's having it's because he's working certain muscles uh hitting and then certain muscles lifting i'm not going to put you on the spot but any insight on that and and because again i know you're 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 a big time lifter and and he'd stay in shape well i would say that uh if it if it's truly his back and that's what's going on with him. And uh, I actually have him back injury myself. Yeah, I mean, and, and I go back to guys like Don Manley, because remember Manley, he actually had a fabulous career, was probably on his way to the Hall of Fame, and he had a back that just just gave out on him. Maybe that's what's happening with uh, Tyler. It's hard to say. You know, backs are weird. They, they do different things, and uh, everybody reacts differently to – you know, whether or not they can completely heal or not. Maybe he can't completely heal or whatever happened to be going on. I mean, it's, it's quite the mystery, you know, and it has been for some time. So it's hard hard to say. It's really hard to say what's going on. And speaking of back injuries, I'm going to go ahead and throw Lars out there because, unfortunately, we got another one this past week with Lars, and that's very unfortunate. Been doing well in a leadoff spot for the cards, and uh, I, you know, really miss his uh, – you know, lifting the top of the order and his enthusiasm within the uh, lineup. So there you go. Standard, like standard, like uh, the other one we just saw. Yeah. So just, uh, it's unfortunate about uh, our outfield situation, but what is fortunate since it is June 2nd, we're going to go ahead and date this particular show. Jordan Walker will be back uh, against the Cardinals or against the Pirates tonight with the Cardinals. So and the only reason I mentioned Walker is because he doesn't happen to be in this set, unfortunately. Right, right. That's why I, that's why I brought him up. So <laughs> if, anybody, if anybody's looking for him, he's not in this set. And just a shout out to Lars. Uh, I know that he is, um, has a tremendous on-base percentage, has done a really good job out of that leadoff spot, drawing walks and making contact. So, yeah, that, that just this whole mystery of back injuries is not is not fun. But I'm going to go ahead and show one next here. Um the legend. The legend. So what year do you think this photo was taken? It wasn't last year, I can tell you that. Exactly. And that was what was the shame about, uh, I felt, Yachty's uh, illustrious career coming to an end. I'm sure they had to beg, plead, and and pretty much borrow and do whatever they could to get him to not uh, go out, uh, you know, without any fanfare. But uh, I just... I wish he would have been just in slightly a little bit better shape last year, but that aside, this particular car just loved, you know, what he's concentrating on here. Just great photo of him. Uh, just a stalwart behind the, behind the plate, future hall of famer, future call Cardinal hall of famer, but just, uh, it's going to be interesting over the next several seasons without that leadership behind the plate, because he's our catcher. I'm not sure. Yeah. Neither are the red birds. So, it's hard. To... And if let's go since we went to the uh, past, let's go to the future, Mr. Yes. Nolan. 
He's on a foil card, as you see. This one is uh, outlined in red, and the uh, other ones are outlined in white. And there are also blue foils in, in this set. And uh, as you can see, he's got the RC for rookie card down there. So the only thing I kind of disliked about this set, because I know it was always supposed to be geared towards kids. So if it, you know, you're chasing cards and trying to get to your, you know, your favorite players on the team and that team set, you know, the, the, there's three of them that are extremely difficult. One's kind of difficult within the Cardinal set. And this is one that's uh, kind of extremely difficult to get, you know, especially, you know, pulling packs. So, that's the only rub I really have against the set is, you know, they made it kind of difficult for kids to, you know, chase these uh, particular cards down. Right. And, and, and because they're foils, I guess that's how they're getting around, not calling them the, the short prints or the, uh, or the SPs. So right. I'll go ahead and show this one because is he the catcher of the future? Wilson Contreras, is he the catcher of the future? We don't know again, because uh, Andy and I have been doing a lot of uh, talking. We talked, almost every single day a lot of it lately has been airing of our frustrations with the uh with the team you know is Wilson Contreras the catcher or is he not well it looks like we've got that resolved because the uh Cardinals had to wait till national media came out and then they uh you know did some serious uh backtracking and and uh repainting the new uh spin coming out of the front office but uh anyway uh i would like to see uh ivan herrera get uh get an opportunity but uh i'm just happy that wilson Contreras is back behind the plate yeah me too yeah. well speaking of that uh how about this fine individual mr mustache love love this guy got a lot of he's quirky and i, I like i like his uh enthusiasm and his uh attitude and the implementation of the uh, burger phone and the dugout as well so if you don't know about that look that look the uh, burger phone story up but uh had a fabulous outing the other night you know before they went on their uh two-day hiatus but uh really liked this guy and he's actually you know started off in a little, in a little bit a little slow but he's really picked it up recently and you know i think he's going to be the glue that kind of holds that pitching staff together moving forward this year the way it looks and hopefully uh, a couple other guys uh, along the way. Yeah, hopefully. I mean, he did get a contract extension, so I was excited to see to see that. I was excited to see the uh, ten strikeout performance, eight strong innings. That was that was pretty cool. So let's go ahead and uh, throw him up there. Uh, it, one of our main beefs is that uh, Wayno gets overlooked a lot. So very happy that. Um, he, is he actually made it. Set. Yeah, he made it. So that was a reason for you and I to exhale and also to celebrate at the same time. Uh, right now, currently sitting three victories shy of that magic number of 200 wins. Uh, he's struggling a little bit, hanging too many curveballs and stuff like that. But let's hope that he can figure it out, get it on the right track and pick up those three victories to get to that magic number of 200. I don't know if that opens any special doors with but potential of maybe getting onto the Hall of Fame ballot. I'm not 100% sure, but uh, right now, as it stands, I, uh, I'm in the I'm in I stand in the court that I don't think he has enough credentials to to be in Cooperstown Cardinal Hall of Fame without a doubt. Uh, Cooperstown, I think he's got to have a few more things going in his favor this season to make that happen. And uh, I'm going to go back to the outfielders for a second because this is the other one of our starting outfielders for the uh, beginning of the season. Uh, Mr. Dylan Carlson, again, kind of a mystery what's going on with uh, him and his ankle and and other things throughout the season. And uh, if anybody's listened, he can't hit left-handed. So the, st the switch hitting is not working. He's better off you know, hitting from the right side, concentrating on one side because the whole – Going back and forth, I, you know, it's apparent that it does not work for him. Too many rolls, too many rollovers to first base. Yep. We get to that off our left-handed hitters. Now this guy, I hope he's he's going to be the other anchor moving forward in the uh, rotation. Uh, so we'll wait and see if he's going to be pitching against the Rangers coming up in the series. Uh, that that not, hits another question mark. So there's many question marks moving forward after this uh, two-day break that the Cardinals have had. Don't mean that we're not trying to be Debbie Downers on this uh on this particular episode, but uh just uh point out some things that are frust frustrating a lot of Cardinals fans. 
but this guy never does. It's because it's Fred Bird. Never <laughs> Fred Bird. And he's a, he's in the set too under the mascots. So he's an insert. Yeah. So got uh got a little nice write up on Fred Bird and his career on the back here. So yeah, cool little card. Every once in a while, he pops up in uh, some somebody's set. So nice to see that Fred Bird makes an appearance in, in the uh, big league set, since it is geared for. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna dog on tops just for one second here with this with Fred Bird. I want right, to see. Go ahead. I want to see him doing the laundry in the outfield. That's all I want to do. I want to see him out there ironing. I always that one always cracks me up when he's out there doing that. So that's my my only knock in this set that that that. Uh, that uh, they haven't found out how to snap a photo and and uh, get it on a tops card of make it a well, short print. Why not? If we, if, well, if we're gonna oh, if you're gonna ask for a short print of Fred Bird, which there is actually one from last year, but if you you want one during COVID, Harrison Bader hit a home run out the center field where Red Bird was doing a painting, and it actually hit the painting and knocked the painting down. So if they could ever you know get yeah. that, that would be excellent as well. So always well. I forgot about that. Good, that. Good, yep. call. good call. All right, you're you're up next, sir. Well, as uh, I'm going to go back to the foils for a second. There's our MVP from last year, Mr. Paul Goldschmidt. Steady. He's always steady. Sometimes he's not hitting, but boy, he can always get on base, manage the work to count, gets a lot of walks, good on base percentage, and uh, having another great year for the Cardinals and. Uh, he may have to carry – maybe he has to carry the load for the offense. We'll see how that goes. Him and Gorman, you know, Arenado, obviously. But uh, glad to see Goldie on there. You know, the thing, too, to mention about Goldie is that, you know, uh, for me as a as a longtime fan, uh, it's nice to have a defensive-minded uh, first baseman as well. I'm not saying that he's – let me re restate that – having somebody who's a gold glove first baseman. I mean, it takes me back to, you know, Keith Hernandez being able to hit and field. Uh, right. yeah, I loved Albert being over there. I love Big Mac being over there. I love some of the other guys being over there, but talk about a guy who, you know, can do the stretch dive, keep his toe on, on the bag in order to, you know, turn some of those, um, hard smashes that are going to second, third, or, uh, or short and, and you know, the th throw bounces and he's, stretches just i want to give him kudos too for his for his defense i've just always thought that that's for whatever reasons in my opinion is somewhat underrated in terms of what he does and i think he's I mean, he's gold he's a gold glover for a reason here's one of our favorite guys right now oh yeah um, we could do a I whole think. show on, on this guy and just his enthusiasm and and what he brings um to I the mean, plate every single day so well, not only that, on defense, I mean, they're asking a lot of him. You know, he's playing either first, you know, left, right, short, you know, second, wherever he happens to be playing over the past two seasons. Uh, he's getting it done. Obviously, won the gold glove for the utility man. First time they uh, actually honored or offered that last year, and he won that. Right. Should probably get it again because he's got some outfield assists, too, this year, which have been pretty incredible. He's got some spot right. on throws coming from left and right. Just did that the other night against the Royals as well. So I just love the way the guy plays. I mean, he's a grinder. I mean, that's there's no other way to play. Yeah. Well, and one other quick thing about him, you know, we've we've talked about this. And the only the only thing that I would ask again, sorry, we're not trying to turn this into a Debbie Downer show, but you know, I love I love Brendan Donnie is now they're calling him Brendan Donnie. Uh, let's not have him be the backup at first anymore. Let's, if Goldie needs a break, let's let Yepes play first base and let's get the damn bat in there for uh, for the Cardinals and you know put Donnie back at at uh, backing up second, backing up third, or in the outfield. But let's let's or, get rid of the experiment at first base. Or how about this? We do have a guy down at AAA that's got six currently has sixteen home runs that uh, also plays first base that could back up Goldie and also DH. So you may want to take a look at that. Because I can't understand the uh, mystery also that is Barrera that takes up a roster spot that could be either Gomez or Baker. Or how, what, how do you – I think you pronounce it Baker, if, that, if I'm correct. Right. But uh, – or anybody. I mean, just, just pretty much anybody. So it's like, uh, you you know, can we just stick anybody in there? Just give it – try something different. And speak, right. Speaking of versatility, let's look at this cat. Nice follow-up. This nice guy, follow yeah. I don't know where we'd be without him and Donovan. I mean, come on. I mean, 
put him anywhere, gets gets the job done, and he gets very and you know, gets some key hits just like Donovan. You know, sometimes the average doesn't always speak for what him and Donovan do, but boy, they they always seem to come through. You know, when they need. It. And Donovan set a or did something that hadn't been done in the major leagues for over 100 years uh, last Saturday when he, you know, scored the runs, extra base hit, you know, and did, you know, he pretty much, he pretty much won the game by himself last Saturday. Take a look at that. If you guys don't know what we're talking about on that. Yep. We always, we should start posing a question because we, when people, uh, you know, reply and, and comment that we know that uh, people are paying attention and watching the entire show. So we appreciate that. It's okay. I'm going to let you uh, open up on this one. This okay, is so, so we pull so, our hair out. So you first. So he's pitching, pitching better lately, on and off this season. And uh, for goodness sakes, everybody, let's please stop talking about 2019 like he was like he was on some kind of big side young push. You know, he was 11 and eight. You know, he actually had a much better year last year starting out before he was injured. So, you know, I'd rather see that jet form of Jack than the one from 2019, if we're really going to look at how you know his performance and how he was pitching. So I like to see him get back to what he was doing early on last year before he was, uh, before he got hurt. And uh, put you on the spot here real quick before you show your one more card or two more cards, because I've lost count on how many we've gone so far. So is Jack a Cardinal, um, going into 2024 or do we, or is he, we trade him or do you think that eventually he just says, you know what, I'm a free agent. Goodbye. What do you think? I think, I think he wants to be on the West coast. I think he'll be on the West coast probably next year. I think that's, you know, inevitable. It's just how things are kind of, you know, panning out and the way it, it kind of, it kind of depends on how the season goes too and how everybody finishes up. I think that's another thing and where, where the Cardinals are you know, about the deadline too. So that, I think that's going to have a lot to do with it. You know, do, we're going to have a music reference here. My name is, and oh, no, it's not Eminem, but it's, it's Pujols. Love it. So this is a cool card. Uh, I don't, I don't know why I like it. It's a name tag. Basically it's a, <laughs> it's a name tag. So got a little write up on the back of it, but uh, all roll call. So and they do have some really cool um, inserts on this on this set. Um, I'm pretty pretty excited about seeing them. Some of mine aren't here yet, um, including that one. Yeah, eight bit. He's an eight bit baller too. Look at that. Another cool uh, card. Another very very uh, video game esque on the uh, graphics there, and the eight from the eighties. So really, really nice card. And then since you brought those up, Brian, we'll go ahead and go to one more. Absolutely. Nolan Gorman, another guy, you know, future, you know, the future uh, of the Cardinals there. Love, love watching him play. You know, and I love, I love it when he can, when he cranks them out because he, he's got some kind of power boy when he gets a hold of a ball. So really, really love watching him play. And at second, you know, people dog him at second base, but he's a, he's a plus defender at second base that people don't know that. So and the only way he's going to get any better is if he gets to play second. So he just can't, you know, primarily DH. Everybody's like, oh, just keep him at DH because everybody's under the assumption that he can't play second base. But, yeah, he plays a pretty good second base. Just people don't know that. And and just throwing this in here, so correct me if I'm wrong. I'm trying to go back. I can't believe I don't know this off the top of my head. So if I'm wrong, I, I, I that's the one thing that, you know, we both like to do is our homework before this. But it wasn't – didn't Gorman come up or when they signed him? Wasn't he a third baseman? He was. They moved him up a second just because of, you know, hey, we've got Nolan Arenado, the chances of him cracking the lineup. So, you know, here, here here's a guy that they made move. Same thing with Jordan Walker moving him to the to the outfield. So it's not like these guys – don't know how to play the game. I mean, he's trying to learn how to play second base and Walker moving out to the outfield, trying to do this at the, at triple a, and then at the major league level. So, you know, you're, you're, both of these guys are trying to change and do these positions at the highest and the second highest level of professional baseball. So give them, give them, you know, give them a little bit of uh wiggle room as they say, or give them a little bit more on the leash before you tighten it up and want to yank them off the field. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and uh, throw out the first ballot Hall of Famer and greatest right-handed hitter of all time. So there's another foil for you in the form of Mr. Albert Pujols. 
And it seems like to me like this picture or a similar photo to this has been used about five times by tops in the past two years. So yeah. That, okay. You know, as long as they get, they get Albert in there, obviously you got over 700 home runs and 2000 RBIs. So, I mean, you just, it just doesn't get any better than that. We got to see a, a lot of that in St. Louis and with the Cardinals. So big shout out for uh, Albert there. And I think there's one more foil. If you're going to go ahead and throw that out there, Brian. You mentioned him earlier. I took him out of the penny sleeve. There he is. Love this card. I love this guy. I hope he sticks around with the Cardinals and doesn't start belly aching after, I, again, editorializing here on my part, but uh, after some empty promises that were made at the beginning of the season or even during the off season on all the changes that were going to be made. And not on his part we... to clarify, but on the uh, Cardinals part, I'm sorry. Correct. Yeah. Thank you for my, I got my tongue, my words twisted up there, but yes, that is, that is correct. So anyway, since, then, around. since we're getting short on time here, Brian, I wanted to close it out with, uh, Oh, Ryan Helsley, because he is supposed to be the closer. That at least that's what I thought. So if he's supposed to be the closer, in the history of the Cardinals and the, you know, the likes of uh, Bruce Suter, Lee Smith, uh, Jason Isringhaus, and my list goes on and on. Accuracy, Hanky, let's. Mott, Wayno. I mean, yeah, yeah, Wayno. And let's let him be the closer. Let's quit trying to extend him different innings and let everybody have a role in the bullpen because it seems to help these guys out when they do. So please give this guy a chance and let him actually maybe close the game to see if he can actually do that instead of trying to bump him up in the seventh inning, eighth inning, whatever happens to be. Let him close out the ninth, and the guy throws 104, so just to see what he can do. But it just seems every time he gets the two-inning stretch going on, for whatever reason, it just seems to be some kind of block going on there. So as we close it out, let him close it out. How about that? Well played. But also uh, – for uh, the musical reference, the Foo Fighters got a, a brand new, uh, I don't know, what, what do you call it now? CD, album, I don't know. Depends on, I mean, they, they the band themselves almost gets to call it anymore. Some of them are coming, coming out and saying we got some new vinyl out, meaning that there are, some of them are going back to uh, producing the old vinyl records. They're making a comeback. So uh, I guess I it's, know, what, what, it's called music. Here We Are. I've heard some, I heard some tracks on it already today because I, I actually downloaded it. So I guess it, they got a new download out. So there you go. Uh, get, in, get in the future. So check it out because I don't have a Van Halen, obviously I don't have a Van Halen reference because we are now in 2023 and this set is in 2023. So nothing really going on as far as Van Halen is concerned at this point in time. All right. One, one VH note. And that's why I'm putting up the V here before I say peace out. Uh, okay. Oh, Oh, U812 is 35 years old this year. That's that's my reference. You're right because I forgot. I, I could have mentioned that. Good good call, good call back on that. Good job. All right. Right. Hey everybody. everybody thanks, thanks for you. joining catch, us. Catch us on catch us on uh, at everything at Bird Brains uh, 66, and that's on the that's on the the tweet, the Twitter, the the flip, the flap, the Instagram, and all that good stuff. Check us out, and thanks again, everybody. Appreciate you. Thank you.